Welcome to the One Within All, back to the Innerverse podcast. I'm your host, Chance, and today's guest is not really even a guest at this point. Matt is like my sometimes co-host, and I think that's how this conversation is going to go. If you haven't heard previous episodes with Matt Landman, probably would do uh, good for you to go check them out because he is an incredible activist and a great speaker and just an enthusiastic carrier of the truth frequency to anybody who is ready to listen, has eyes to see and ears to hear. Uh, you can find Matt online at his Spiro clothing protection company. It's uh, EMF protection, actually. I'm wearing the hat right now, protecting my dome from all those weird Wi-Fi frequencies swirling around. And he's also got a great movie, FrankenSkiesTheMovie.com, where you can learn about the history of government, weather control, manipulation experiments, Today's conversation is kind of up in the air where it's going to go. We have a lot of things on our mind and Matt probably has plenty to catch us up on regarding what's been going on in the West Coast. I mean, stuff is extra weird there. I'm in the Midwest, so things take a while to ripple inward. But here we are, probably the onset of the uh, second wave of the bogus lockdowns and things like that that are going on everywhere. And man, I can't wait to get into it. So Without further ado, just remember to uh, check the show notes for Matt's links and how you can get Interverse Plus to hear the second hour. And let's roll, man. Let's uh, let's get going. Welcome, Matt. How you doing? Hey, Chance. Always a pleasure. I really love your introductions. And and yeah, while you were giving me my introduction, I was thinking about all the different shows. And every time I do a show with you, I'm in a different situation. But now I'm in Ashland, Oregon. I'm really happy to be here on the West Coast of the United States. And and yeah, we've already, I've grown so much and we've all been changing so much, doing all these things and really opening our minds and hearts and <sighs> to the truth, you know? So, so many things. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to the show. So yeah, I'm excited. Thank you. So I guess I'll steer the ship towards what really interested me about getting you on again, even though it hasn't even been that long. <laughs> well, I consider you at this point, just like a co-homie, co-host, uh, you you know, you and I stay in touch a lot and you show me some pretty crazy things. And not long ago when the fires were happening in the West Coast, I don't know if they still are, um, you know, that kind of information it gets really lost in the circus, especially in an election cycle in October. But, uh, you know, you showed me this video of the obvious fuckery when it came to the fires in an area that you were in and i'd love for you to kind of talk about that describe what you were demonstrating in the videos and you know why this information matters and why we need to start really questioning the narrative even if we don't know exactly what is going on that something is uh definitely not right and unnatural here yeah thank you so much for bringing that up actually um a little time has passed at, at first i was like so excited like i think i hit you up like the day of. i was like we gotta talk about this but it's really actually important and necessary for me to process these things and to get grounded and to really like see the big picture um and to give things a little time so i'm glad that we let uh, a few weeks elapse between the actual events and talking about it but this is very very critical information because this, this is the normalization of like some really high tech weaponry at the ground level in our neighborhoods and whatnot. So where to begin? Okay. So firstly, the, the path of an activist, as we know, um, and I've been at it pretty hardcore for like five, six, seven years, and it's always rapidly changing. Okay. First I'm a Kim trail. Well, you know, like even to put labels on anything, like I tried to encompass everything. Like I launched this website at first called actual activists dot com and on there i try to encompass every truth that i've ever come across you know and you can dig in there and find out why hand sanitizers are bad because of the chemicals in them that disrupt your endocrine system and there's so much information just there of truth because i feel and and preach that truth is a frequency and once you start to elevate to that frequency and really hold on to that vibration all these other truths become self-evident so it's not just like one thing so I was the chemtrail guy and still am because, um, I mean, I'm always doing that and exposing that truth because that's always necessary because it takes so much time. I mean, there's so many people that don't know that chemtrails are real. So there's that, you know, there's that. So I was the Frankenskies guy. Please, if you haven't seen the movie, very important now and forever. Frankenskies is a very important documentary. Starts off in 
the 1920s and shows the chronological history of weather modification history. We need to know about this now, especially as we're being pitched the solution to climate change, which is geoengineering, which is a big scam. And it's already been going on and all these things so much. So first I had to learn about the weather and become like a meteorologist, you know, all the while learning about health and becoming my own like nutritionalist, you know, and herbs and plants and learning. We just keep learning, right? And then the, the amount of research I've done on vaccines, I might as well be a immunologist of some sort. And then, especially after this COVID thing, we're now like micro, microbiologists. We're learning all about uh, biology. Oh my gosh, I'm just putting this together now. We can talk about this forever. But th like this whole thing about um, bacteria, right? People are wearing their masks in the summer where, the, where their moisture in their mouth is dissipating, right? Imagine in the winter when their, their moisture in their mouth creates this fog, haze, and they're still wearing that mask. It's a big bacterial culture just waiting. And they're breathing in and out of this, uh, this Teflon, essentially, that makes... It's like basically um, antibiotics for the air that you're breathing. So you take too many antibiotics, what happens? You end up with antibiotic resistant strains like MRSA and all this stuff. People are culturing antibiotic, essentially resistant strains of bacterial pneumonia in their face, right? And they're giving it moisture, moisture, moisture. And by the time their immune systems are cracked and the, and the winters really hit, the fourth wave or third wave or whatever they're talking about, dude, it's just such a setup. And come to find out that this is what happened in the Spanish flu. And Fauci actually co-wrote a paper. I found the paper. His name's on it. And in the paper, Fauci says that the Spanish flu, the biggest wave of death was this bacterial pneumonia, right? That wasn't viral. So I'm learning about virus. Sorry, that tangent. I'm learning about viruses and bacteria now. I might as well become like a, a, a healthcare practitioner at this point. And then now with the fires, oh, and then of course, EMF. I learned, I, had, I learned about EMF through my own sensitivities and realizing like 5G towers everywhere is bad and that we need to do something about it. And so I launched this clothing line and going and speaking at city halls. And I'm glad I did a lot of that while we could speak at city halls now, because now it's totally bogus, you guys. Like they're like, oh yeah, join our Zoom meeting and type on the side if you have an objection to us, you know, doing what we're going to do to you. It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Before we used to like stand up and be like, hey, hey, you know, momentum and you get your time and then people stand up behind you and you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's totally changed. Everything's changed. You can't type on the Zoom meeting, like how important it is to not get spray the mosquitoes in my neighborhood or whatever, or put up the 5G towers or fluoridate my water or whatever. They'll just like, oh yeah, we'll look into that type ity type. And they don't even get to see the look on your face or feel your heart or anything like that. Everything's changing dramatically right before us. Don't get me going. So I had to learn about that and become an electrical engineer of sorts and learn about EMF radiation and grounding and all that and, and launch the clothing line to protect people with the silver. So that was like a whole profession. And now I'm, I guess I'm becoming a forensics fireman guy, detective. <laughs> right. It's like, okay, the, the activist wears very many hats, you know, it's just like, doom. I mean, I've got an MBA, I've got a, an MBA and I'm a film, oh yeah, I'm a film producer, director, you know, I'm a film, film director. So, um, I feel you, man. I was just telling someone the other night, like all the different things that I sometimes do as like in a professional sense. <laughs> and right. but whenever you find yourself on the path of doing what feels right and what you know is right. There's going to be a bunch of different directions that seem like they're going opposite ways from each other. But actually, those threads like will wind together and uh, tie together at some point. And you'll be like, wow, I'm really glad that I did all this stuff over here because it's helping me with this stuff over here. And that's uh, the beauty of our uniqueness, because we each have this amazing different set of potentialities that we can explore and enhance in ourselves. And you're definitely an example of that, man. And. Yeah. Um, and when it comes to the forensics on the fire stuff that you're about to get into, that is really as easy as just looking at what's self-evidently there and uh, comparing it to the story of what supposedly happened and noticing the huge discrepancies. It's like that easy and pretty much that easy when it comes to examining any of the bogus narratives that were fed from these uh, technocratic scientism worshiping wannabe controller freak shows. <laughs> Right. So um, here's how real science works. Hello, world. Here's how the real science works in our modern day of this empire of lies. You find something that you want to, you know, hypothesize and test, you know, 
the the thesis that is per, like represented to you, such as fluoride in your water, synthetic fluoride in your water is good for you. It's good for your teeth. Okay. So you're like, well, firstly you can test your intuition and you can be like, does this insult my soul? You know, does this sound like a good thing or whatever? Do I want to spend my time on this? And personally, it sounds really insulting that, that, that is that, and that someone's administering medical, uh, their, their, they're, they're adding something to my drinking water, you know, without my consent, right? And then you, you dig into it and it doesn't even bond to your teeth, right? So it goes into your bloodstream and then does it get into your teeth that way while it's in your bloodstream? No. And is it like a neurotoxin and hazardous waste? Yes. So it's like, okay, well, and then did, can people get fluorosis and get like really sick from it? And like, you know, do they have to wear a hazmat suit when they put it into your drinking water? And does it cost the city money to put it in your drinking water? All these things. And then you build like your whatever. It, it's actually really easy because when you have the supposed truth slash lies, and then you have the, the, the other side, which is the hypotheses of what could actually be true. When the hypotheses of what could actually be true versus their lies becomes obviously more able to be true, they, they become like, you know, you start to weigh out what could actually be true. And when the lies have nothing to stand on and the, the, your, your theories hold way more water you know, it's just, it's just unreal. So yeah, let's just get into the fires for a minute. And it's just been, it's been wild. It's been unreal. So, um, I, I, I love that we've done a show every, we did a show a few months ago because just then I was showing you headlines and we were predicting crazy fires, but they hadn't happened yet, which is amazing because somehow we could have predicted that they happened and they did. So firstly, we're just going to talk about the West Coast, although I know Colorado was on fire and probably still is in all that stuff. California witnessed... Hold, hold 11- on a second, Matt. The last episode we did together, uh, where we talked a lot about masks, the cover art I made for that episode was just like this silhouette of a person with a mask on with the Illuminati triangle on the mask. And behind him were just these crazy flames. It was like a premonition because, <laughs> yeah, it wasn't happening yet. I just want to throw that out there. We definitely were onto it. And there's a couple other things we predicted back then that looked like they could be radically true as well. Yeah. For instance, this lockdown of dude, when they, okay, let me just talk about one more truth. When the COVID thing first came out, it was like insulting to my soul you know, and some people are like, it's just a test. It's only going to last a few weeks. After like one week, I was like, they've got us so by the balls. We've closed our businesses. We're hoarding toilet paper and like everybody's failing and flailing and begging the government for a $1,200 check. There's no way this is going to let up. Like they're taking away our freedoms. And I was just like completely insulted. And I was like, okay, well, where is the truth in this? Is there, is any of what they're saying true? And what really resonated with me was that this is not going to let up and it didn't, you know? And so like what was true was, was our theories in a lot of situations. And what was not true was what they were saying was, was supposedly true. What have you. So did you see the world bank put the uh, COVID preparedness action plan or something like that out? And the project end date is 2025. So like the world bank is planning on this going on for five years. (laughs) This thing, like I, I at first thought, oh, are they going to do COVID-19 and then COVID-20 and then COVID-21? No, they're just going to keep it with COVID-19. They're like, yeah, we got that one. We got that one in everybody's heads. We're just going to keep running with it. And it's, it's like, it's going to be this never ending story unless we stand up for ourselves, you know, everywhere in every way. I was just sending off on the phone. I sent you these, um, devices that are going to start coming out where they just scan you as you walk into buildings and take your temperature. I mean, I've already witnessed them once in a gas station, but like as masks are accepted, other things are going to be accepted. Like maybe your vaccine certificate or whatever brainwashing that happens, but we've got so much to talk about, including the elections and stuff like that. So I'll get into fires really quick. So first California had 11,000 lightning strikes, which when you know that the weather is controlled, you start to question, you know, was that purposeful? And it just happened to be hey, a world record. It had never happened before anywhere. So California got 11,000 lightning strikes in, in like a day and a half. Let's just say like a 48 hour time frame approximately. So, and I know that's two days. Yeah. So um, 11,000 lightning strikes light all these fires. And then some were arson, some were not lightning and they couldn't keep up. And then all of a sudden there's like 500 fires raging in California. And it became like a topic of presidential debate. And Trump 
which this Trump thing, we could talk about it forever. And I've thought about it really deep. It's very deep and psychological. They're really like picking a side. And oh, on a, on a side note, I was really trying to analyze why is this Biden is a pedophile stuff going viral? Like, what is the deal with that? And as like some weird satanic agenda. And I started really getting analytical. And I honestly think that people are going to rush to vote for Biden, even though their vote doesn't count. Like Trump's going to win. It's going to be a total chaos, probably, you know. But people will rush to vote for Biden knowing that he's a pedophile, which is like, this is kind of satanic agenda. Like they're consenting to some weird, weird pedophilia agenda. Biden won't win, but they're consenting by signing their, their souls over, basically, by saying that they're okay voting for this guy out of hatred for Trump, basically. So it's like this, this, this weird energy, like they're, they're preying on your hatred so that you consent to a pedophile being in office. Maybe he won't even win, but still you're consenting to a satanic agenda, which is, we're, we're going deep into weird satanic agenda. Like this whole the same 20- thing in reverse is true too, man. Like the ones that go out to vote for Trump are also accepting the lesser of two evils because we know all kinds of, I mean, we there's court cases, open court documents of uh, Trump being prosecuted for the exact same type of thing, inappropriate behavior with underage girls. And so that's like a really big deal. I saw a hilarious meme the other day that had George Carlin making his classic, like what the fuck face. And, uh, it had Stalin on the left and Hitler on the right. And it said, if Stalin ran as a Democrat and Hitler ran as a Republican, one of them would get in the White House. Like, that's yeah. democracy for you with this two-party system. I miss Carlin. I love that guy. George Carlin. What a, what a beautiful soul. So here I am in California and 11,000 lightning strikes go down and the whole place erupts into flames. And people are debating over, like Trump literally said to California, well, you're not going to get, and mind you, this is all staged, of course. Trump says, well, you're not going to get any federal aid because I told you so. You should have kept your forest clean and I warned you about this. And it becomes this like debate and people are like burning, their houses are burning and they're hating Trump even more. Like the, the, the West Coast has been brewing this Trump hatred to such an extreme that they're literally going to break away from the United States. It's planned. Like it's, it's totally the writings on the wall. It's been prophesized in these stupid Illuminati movies like The Handmaid's Tale in 1990. California breaks away in a, in a civil war. And then the rest of the country can't get their fruits and vegetables and whatnot. And when California breaks away, they can have their own little bill of rights and their new constitution and push the transhumanism agenda full steam with Musk and his new kid and all that nonsense. It's totally like, it's all self-evident to me. And it's just like, I'm like, I want to scream it from the rooftops, but I know no one will listen. So I've got you. Thank you, brother. I love it. So, and it's like such a blessing to have you to be able to like say these things. And everybody listening, we love you all. Yeah, we love you. So we had, um, um, we had homie on the show. Uh, Dylan and we were breaking down the front page of the San Francisco Chronicle and it said expecting uh, sweltering and it had all this predictive programming in the terminology of the fires that were to come and we were like look they're obviously predictively programming us that we're going to get hit with a bunch of fires then randomly 11,000 lightning strikes come out of the blue when the weather's controlled you know this is total bullshit right and then California's in flames and it's like this debate and really it was just like people were hating Trump based on what was being said and it was totally crazy then Washington erupts into flames, about 20 fires all at once. And it's all arson. It's just arson, 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 people lighting fires. Then in a week's time frame, Portland, Oregon got 100 fires lit in the city. And it's all arson and it's all Antifa, right? Which is kind of weird because Antifa is radical Democrats, which is already still blowing my mind. We could do a whole show, whole show on that because I always thought Democrats were like pretty chill and environmentalists and like uh, pro, you know, choice and like anti guns and stuff. How we how we're dealing with radicalism on both sides is just like it's we're breeding a weird civil war and it's all it's all Soros. It's all like planned. It's all ridiculous. A hundred fires broke out in Portland, which is totally Democrat. It's a blue city, you know, blue state, and somehow the radical blue people are lighting the place on fire. It's right. So that happened. A hundred fires. But but what the news sees is fires in Oregon, fires in Oregon, climate change, right? It's arson. These people are being arrested. They're going to jail. And already it's like this happened in Chicago. I have a friend in Chicago PD telling me all about this, that when there's like these riots in Chicago, that these people come from out of town, they loot and break up the whole city. They're already 
known that they're going to be coming in because the judge has already paid off by Soros. They come in, they get a slap on the wrist, and they're out on the same day lighting fires again. Like literally, these people, these arsons in Oregon, they were lighting fires, getting arrested, getting out the same day with hardly enough, like a slap on the wrist or whatever because it's already been like paid off by Soros and the judges are already on board and whatever. And then these people are lighting fires the same day, again, getting arrested again, just a little bit up the freeway, right? Like homes are building and all this stuff. It's like, it's like chaos. And the world news says, oh, we've got to do geoengineering and dim your sun by spraying the sky's aluminum because look, these fires are out of control and this is climate change. And it's all your fault because you drive an SUV and carbon, you know, it's so bad, right? So already that's just total insanity. And uh, sorry, they maybe you smack the computer because I was so mad. So, okay, so we've got that going on. Then I'm living in Southern Oregon, right? Which I- I've always seen as a really <laughs> safe place to live, right? I'm living in Ashland, Oregon, right? Um, and all of a sudden on this windy day, we got like 10 fires lit in the region by arsons, you know? Arsons lighting fires again. And there's no investigation into it. And like the front pages talk about that they're wildfires. No, they weren't wildfires. They were, they were fires lit by arsons. And obviously a space is like drenched gasoline and lit by people. And then trees caught on fire. And then what unfolded afterwards is unreal. Okay. So first, what, what happened on this like fire timeline? So I'm talking about me becoming like a forensic analyst and getting into all this stuff. You know, this fires thing. So first, what I witnessed was Santa Rosa, California, got these crazy fires and all these neighborhoods got leveled and some trees are standing. And I'm like, okay, and I'm watching fires go down in Australia and I'm seeing these firestorms, sustained firestorms of like raging fires going through forests. Fire tornadoes, man. Yeah. Like fire tornadoes. Sustained things. And these raging fires are coming through and they're, they're ripping through with embers embers blasting through the air and they're hitting these homes and they're burning up things. I'm seeing these videos. I'm doing my investigations, trying to figure it out. I'm actually planning on becoming a fireman as well. Like just, I'm getting up in it. I think it's really important to actually know how to protect ourselves. It's actually pretty badass. So um, what happened in Santa Rosa was some fires that seemed kind of suspect, but whatever happened, a bunch of homes got leveled and pulverized into dust, you know, leaving just chimney stacks. And what happened on social media, like on social media, I'm all up on there. Like I've got uh, Matt Landman on Facebook. I've got 52,000 followers. I've got actual activists. It's a page on Facebook with 20,000 followers. I've got actual chemtrail activists. It's a group on Facebook. I don't know. There's like a few thousand people in there. I've got handfuls of groups all over. I've got another group called Meet the Frankens. And it's like uh, Franken Skies, Franken Food, Franken Children, talking about vaccines, GMO, and the skies. I've got all these different groups. And I see like, cause people send me messages every single day. Like you guys have no idea. Just, I get these messages every day. It's, it's, it's great. And I get to see the pulse of the conspiratorial community, I guess, if you want to call it or the truth community. And I actually get to see what goes viral nowadays because what they let go viral is very, uh, I, I tend to wonder why they let things go viral and why they don't. Like I, I, I just, I've witnessed it and I, and it's, it's real and certain things, um, the algorithms or the social media platforms, there's only a few and they have only, you know, they're run by the same entities, you know, YouTube and such. And some things get to get out there and some things don't. Like if you look up Frankenskies, you can't really find my movie or my post of it, but the word is out there. You can dig, dig, dig and find my movie, you know, but like they censor Frankenskies because it's amazing and it's full of truth. And it went viral in its own way until they had to, you know, lay the clamps down on it in 2017 when it was released. But what I'm getting at is when things go really, really viral, viral, I start to ask questions. So what I witnessed on all my social media platforms during the Santa Rosa f- uh, fires was this viral directed energy weapons do the EW of these like Northrop Grumman, like plane drone things cloaked, cloaked drones shooting laser beams from planes and, uh, uh, and annihilating homes. And that's like what was really happening. There wasn't really these fires raging through. And so that didn't really resonate with me because one, it went totally viral. Two, I was kind of more on the ground level thinking like, well, what about like this network of smart meters on the homes? These smart meters can surge and pulverize a home and it goes that, that 
that smart meter dirty electricity it goes to every it goes to every outlet it goes through all the wires in the home like it looks kind of like these homes are burned from within these these homes are burned from within from like an electrical fire or something that was kind of like my theory at first and i kind of thought that the that the laser beams from the sky seemed a little crazy. And then I actually met a woman at a farmer's market who didn't, we, we never met before. And she came up to me and was screaming about there's lasers and watch out and all this stuff. And I'm like, whoa, 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 what? Who are you? And I'm like, and, and she even told me she lost her friends, that they didn't believe her, that the cloaked lasers were coming from the sky. And I'm just like, well, that would be really easy for the CIA to make that story go viral, hiding the truth a little bit by kind of having a little bit of truth, because maybe it is directed energy in a certain way or whatever, but I felt like the official story, which was still conspiracy, but once you really start to learn about conspiracies, it's like they flood, 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 flood. When, like, like for instance, when COVID happened, there was a flood of information, like disinformation, mis- misinformation, information, maybe the truth is in there, but like we were hearing 5G caused it and all these things and all these different things were going viral and everyone just gets confused. And that's like, I guess this been this tactic ever since, I don't know what, the internet came out at, at least, you know, like we're so, we, we get so much and they like to somehow through their karmic law or some sort of thing, they have to give us the truth. They give us the truth too. It's like hidden in plain sight, you know? Like I have, I fully feel like they could hide it from us really well but they don't because maybe they need our consent or maybe it's part of the whole game or you know maybe it's just easier to enslave us i I mean maybe there's karmic law maybe there really is repercussions for their actions if they don't tell us what they're doing as they do it you know and i've given this a lot of pondering ended up you know myself one thing matt maybe there's karmic repercussions for those of us who grab onto a story like directed energy weapons and spread it and cause fear and panic without ourselves finding out, is that really 100% true? Do I know that for sure? And we spread that idea because it's the viral idea. Everyone's talking about it. Are we getting karmic repercussions for spreading a falsity or spreading well, fear? I think that there's a good point to be made there too. I have thought about that a lot. And if we have good intentions and we're really, really trying and we're not just being shady and looking for attention or whatever, I just, because very good example back when I first learned about chemtrails, I was gung ho and on the war path and really spreading a lot of disinformation saying that contrails existed. I was like, no, there's contrails and there's chemtrails and come to find out there's no contrails. It's all big con. And that was like a big divisive like tactic. It was very, very smart of them. So then you get people confused and they're like, well, not, I'm not an aeronautical engineer. I'm not a weatherman. I can't just identify cloud patterns. I'll leave it to the meteorologist, you know? And come to find out there's like short trails, there's medium trails, there's long trails. They're all being mixed together. And if you just start to look up, you see this like this orchestra of mixing of shit in your sky. And it's all this like basically a few different chemicals getting mixed together. And so, okay. So what I think that they've done is they're weaponizing the trees, bro. It's crazy. It's like, I mean, okay. I know it sounds crazy. So, we are weaponizing the trees, man. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I know, man. I was like, how am I going to convey this one to people? No, it's just... I got to I gotta get it really though. good. I know, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about it. I'm going on David Icke uh, next month and Coast to Coast next month, and I want to get it like down so I don't sound like a total loon. But um, we've been scratching our heads as truth seekers and speakers and activists, and we've been... Okay, so back to the contrail thing. Like, I... I really was fired up trying to keep, get people to look at the sky and to really see that something was going on. And because my heart was in the right place, I try not to kick myself too much. And, and yeah, people, FYI, contrails don't exist. These condensation trails that they say are coming out of some jets. There's these high bypass turbo fans. The jets that we see in the sky, they're, they're blowing, they're just fans. Okay, They're blowing air. There's no heat at all. So there's not this whole theory of like condensation from a blasting heat. They're spinning their turbines. They're very effective engines, two ton steel and titanium that somehow disappear into world into uh, the Pentagon. So these very effective big turbo fans um, that usually don't disappear into Pentagons that are two tons. <laughs> these these things spin and they just blow air. They're very effective and productive and amazing, but they don't, there's no con, 
dispensation. There's no contrail. It's a big con. So like sometimes people get in there like speaking and then like there's other things like, yeah, the, the energy weapons and stuff. I was on that path for a minute, but then I really got into my discernment and really went an, another way, which is I think it's an integrated network of this like internet of things that they can crank up and it's, it utilizes the cell towers. It utilizes all of the homes that have these smart meters on them that can surge and whatnot and, and direct energy from house to house and whatnot and destroy these, these homes and, and target communities. And also as we've been watching these chemtrails spray for 30 years over our forests and wonder where we're going, what's going on. They've laid aluminum in our trees, bro, for 30 straight years. And yes, these are, patented fire accelerants. So it does play a role in this fire game. But also, I firmly am putting together a hypothesis that I'll share with you now. So in Ashland on that day, when the Almeda fires, A-L-M-E-D-A fires, um, devastated over 2,000 homes. Okay. I'm, I'm firmly believing this is a planned attack. For one, there was arson of there was, there was winds. There was engineered winds that day. Okay. Very crazy 40 mile per hour, like crazy gusting engineered winds. Then fires were set. Yes. Fires were set all over to, and they were, the, the winds like rushed through these trees and the, the fire, the amazing, um, experienced, skilled firemen of the region tried to quell these fires. So on the day of the Almeida fires in Southern Oregon in Ashland, um, where Talent, Oregon, and Phoenix got totally burned. There's these two towns called Talent, Oregon, and Phoenix, Oregon, right on the outskirts of Ashland, Oregon, and Southern Oregon. So 10 fires were lit by arsons on a day of engineered crazy winds. And um, I believe that those fires lit were a, a distraction of some sort. Okay, this sounds really crazy. And, and with all due respect to the people who lost their homes and with all due respect to the truth and with all due respect to all of these things, okay, there's this Alclara 210 smart meter that doesn't have this like surge protector from the home um, to the power lines. And all these homes were outfitted with these smart meters okay a lot of homes that are sitting right in the middle of all this rubble the ones that are still standing are the ones that did not have the smart meters that had these analog meters or these um, non-smart digital meters that are not this eclair 210 this eclair 210 are, are actually designed to to fail it seems and are, are very dangerous so what i think happened i'll just tell you what i think happened and then we can like back we can just like back up and this is very important so I believe fires were lit on that day as a distraction. I believe fires were coming through some of the trees. And then I believe that a weapon was deployed that I, that I feel was utilized in Santa Rosa and then again in Paradise, all right, uh, California. And now for the third time here and maybe even in other places because there's other uh, fires that are being normalized now Okay, this is being fully normalized right now before our eyes. I just saw on the front page of the San Francisco Chronicle, it said um, Santa Rosa rebuilt. But it, but it was like the third year anniversary of the Santa Rosa fires. And it didn't show Santa Rosa rebuilt. It just showed all of the pulverized, uh, dustified homes with the trees surrounding them. And it's like these questions are being asked, like, are, are these fires natural? And people are like, no, this is, this is the new normal, right? So what I think happened was, these cell towers in this community, there's three cell towers in this community. And they um, go from Southern Talent to basically Northern Talent and then to Phoenix, which is just north of that. So there's a line of these three towers, which the fires happened to go perfectly along and jump a highway to get to the next one. And they went the direct path of this fire. So first I, I had a hypothesis. Well, first I witnessed this shit, you know, and it's total insanity. And the devastation is very real. And then I saw that the fire was very, very selective. Some metal things melted and some wooden things were untouched. And I started to do some research and start to ask some questions because I would imagine like a raging inferno that melts cars and turns them into molten lava like metal things that I took videos of and whatnot. I would imagine that the trees next to them or like, where's the sustained fire? This all happened in like an afternoon evening. This wasn't a sustained 
fire also, which is very important to, to realize and recognize. This was all very fast. So I'll just, sorry, I'm all over the place. What I think happened was a bunch of fires were lit and that was kind of a distraction. And then their weapon was deployed, which is these trees are embedded with conductive materials such as aluminum. So if there is a fire going on, a smaller one, then a cell tower could it, a cell tower that's within range, you know, where you can get service. And I mean, this one's ra- relatively close, actually, but it's still within service. They can pull the fire through the trees. I, I'm, I'm theorizing. It's totally nuts, I know. So I think this is all ground. There's no lasers coming from cloaked planes. And I believe that this technology is real and that it's going to be further normalized and people are going to never put the pieces together unless, you know, they listen to me. <laughs> and so, so I think that these fires are small and they're set on purpose by humans. George Soros paid idiots that don't know what they're really doing. And then the cell towers direct the energy and pull this like, kind of fire but more of like an electrical like kind of fire thing they pull it through these trees that are embedded with now aluminum and have been for 30 plus years and maybe they're coated with some powder of chemtrails that they do the week before that's even more conductive okay that's think about it dude what happens if you put an aluminum can in a microwave and what is a cell tower a microwave emitter so exactly why couldn't it just direct a, a beam of microwave energy at a certain spot within its radius and then the aluminum is going to start sparking and the, the trees are dry and dude, that sounds way more reasonable than invisible drones shooting laser beams i mean so way more fire, reasonable as the fire raged you know yes there's some of the fires real some of the fires just the fire going but the fire did come right over to the first cell tower and pulverize I'm talking like pulverized buildings surrounding the first cell tower and the first cell tower was untouched, including the fence around it and the little plastic dealies on the fence. Just like magically this cell tower is untouched, but there's metal all around it totally destroyed. Okay. Then the fire hopped the 99 freeway right there over um, on right, like where Creole Not a single scorch mark mark on the road. It literally just skipped over. Not a single scorch mark on the road because I don't think the road has the conductive material and then beelined it to um, the next like line of cars and buildings that are metal. But the wooden stuff seemed to not really be touched. It wasn't. There was like a wooden schoolhouse thing that didn't have a smart meter on it. I found out too, um, because it's like an older like schoolhouse that the power was off and the, it's older model it's, um, smart meter on it. And it literally had its spider webs like on it, like the cobwebs are untouched. And then the next, like right next to it are pulverized, like burned out like tractors and just things that are conductive. Things that are metal are just like burned out, like melted molten metal. But where's the sustained heat to heat it to that temperature? Like I looked at how, how um, hot, fires burn and how hot forest fires burn. And it's like a sustained crazy forest fire that's burning for like a week can get to temperatures. Yeah. That could probably maybe melt, melt melt metal, maybe, but not this, this, this inferno was not raging. Like the trees are, are hardly charred. And like, I even did a little forensics and like, there was a totally burned out car, like totally looked like it was just like melted, burned out, you know, car. And right next to it is a tree that seems untouched. I broke a little branch off the tree. I put a lighter up to it and just the, 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 the leaves burn. Like we're in the midst of a catastrophic drought. Mind you, everything's dry. Okay. We haven't seen a drought like this for 60 years. There's clouds going over that we could totally seed, you know, the power plants nearby seed the clouds for their hydro dams, the ski resorts along the way seed, uh, seed their clouds. And we're so ignorant that we're like, no, that's a conspiracy theory. You know, it's just like, come on. So as this fire is being pulled from cell tower to cell tower, it goes to all the little smart meters and boom, 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 along the way, all these residential places are pulverized, right? Well, if they can pick and choose which places have like the, the um, beam of electricity going to and not or whatever, or they can turn some on and off, then it would make for this like perfect line because the talent bougie shit didn't get touched. There's the police station untouched across the street, apartments and trailer park pulverized. There's the bougie little Shakespeare theater untouched. There's like this weird church that has like this Masonic like checkerboard pattern on it and stuff. They have the old smart meters, wooden, untouched. Pull, everything around it's pulverized. Of all of the homes lost, it was like 
primarily, okay, it was majority, like 90% low income. And out of all of the region, um, the region is primarily like not low income. It, it seems from the logical perspective that the region got a little facelift, that the fires were very, very selective, okay? And that some sort of weapon was deployed where it, the fire went from one cell tower to the second cell tower and then beelined it to the third cell tower. And all three cell towers are surrounded by rubble. They're untouched. All three are untouched, okay? There's metal all around them, totally melted, but the, but, but the wood is not as much impacted which would make sense in this situation where some sort of like directed energy electrical fire is going from metal to metal, to conductive thing, to conductive thing. Like my theory holds way more water than, than the official story. Also, for some reason, no emergency broadcast system went off. This is the most devastating fire this country has like ever seen. Okay. Um, I mean, in, in recent history, at least for these quote unquote wildfires, 2,200 homes, 2,200 families lost everything. And they've hardly even started to clean up. Like literally each site they say is $70,000 just to clean up. And like, it's just like, it's just rubble everywhere. It's just like these, this happened like six weeks ago and it's still just rubble. Okay. So it seems like lower income were targeted. It seems like the nice houses just happened to not get hit. And it seems like these two towns just got a complete and total facelift. All right. And the fires were very selective. And it beelines from home to home with the places that had this Eclaira 210 smart meter that's pr prone for fire hazards and, and has never been tested for the, how high the RF uh, radio frequency microwave radiation go comes off of it. They have, it hasn't even been approved by the FCC or anything like that. There's like court cases out for this specific model, right? It's just like, there's no investigation and there's supposed to be a warning. So I'm thinking to myself, okay, 1000 homes are pulverized in the di broad daylight. Okay. This is like, it was the evening by the time like thousands of homes were burned, but still this all happened very quickly in like an afternoon evening after a thousand homes were burned in this city. This isn't like the middle of nowhere. Uh, uh, no emergency broadcast system went off. Nobody was warned. Nobody got phone calls. Nothing happened at all. Okay. The power wasn't shut off. These homes will continue to be pulverized and be lined to the third cell tower. And it's just like when I started figuring out where the each cell tower was, and if my theory, which seemed crazy to me, I would never ever share this theory unless I would had really, really given it some, you know, thought and investigation. And then here's another kicker. The only place that there's melted cars are like liter like like the cell tower has a, a like um, angular, like these, they're beams of light that we can't see. And light is um, directional and um, linear, right? So yeah, right, right, there's right. a line of sight. There's a clear line of sight from the tower to the site. Right. <laughs> so if you're standing immediately directly under the cell tower in this, in, in with, with the radiation meter, the radiation is not that strong because it's not, it's not like shining down, like directionally, like, like linear, if that makes sense. Right. Um, but as you go and you're like, get the line of sight, like you can beeline it and you're like a few hundred feet away or, or like 300 feet away and you're like seeing, you know, or let's just say hundred feet, right? That's where the radiation is the strongest. And that just happens to be where the cars were melted, bro. I looked for melted cars. There's not melted cars anywhere else. There was no molten lava of freaking cars, except for within close proximity, not underneath but close proximity to the cell towers. So why was the heat so strong there? There needs to be some sort of like official forensics investigation. It's not going to be because guess what? Oh, these theories are totally crazy. And this was, they're even already dismissing that it was arson. Like they're not even, that's not what the headlines are saying around here. The headlines are saying around here, oh, we've got to do something about forest fires. And yeah, trees burn. And like everyone in the communities are saying, oh, it was, it was this, it was that. And like, People are not even getting with the program that it was like that. Even the official story was that it was started by arsons and then the trees that on fire. And then, and then like it went from house to house to house to house. They're, they're either stuck on that. It was arson and they're telling people it's arson, which makes people think the houses were actually burned by arson, like gasoline and burns the house. And that can convolute the story. And then when they see the pulverized homes, they're like, yeah, arson, you know, the houses were burned by arson. That's why it looks like that. Like the official story is already twisted and convoluted. And then somehow, 
we need to dim our skies by geoengineering and spraying aluminum to save us from climate change because that makes sense. But I do, I do think that, the, that this normalization process is going to continue and that they're going to do facelifts and attack uh, poorer communities because who the fuck is going to rise up, bro? Who's going to really see the truth? It's the people that have nothing to lose. It's not those people that are living in their mansions, like kicking back and like, you know, I don't want to generalize and tell, say that those people are wearing masks and vaccinating their kids. But either way, the people that are rich, <laughs> I wanted to say something earlier really quick. So when I was talking about all, us wearing all these different hats, Edward Bernays and the programming and, and all of like the CIA controlled opposition, all these people that are like all up in the bad guys that are like integrated all up in the activist network and stuff like that. They're, and Bernays and the, the control system of like the indoctrination of the education system, all this stuff. They're always like, pick one profession and stick to it. Like trust your doctor. He knows best. You're not a doctor. You're not an astronaut. You're not a, don't bother learning that, you know, stick to one thing. And that's where you can really break out of the system and break out of the lies is by like actually learning to grow your own food. And like, you don't have to give that ability away to the farmer because it's actually really an amazing, easy process. And once you start to really hone in on your abilities and powers and like, you can do all these things, you don't need a carpenter, you can do it. Like, you know, maybe you need to learn, but learning is doing, you know, and that's how you teach the kids and all this stuff. Don't give all your powers away, you know, sorry, a long tangent, but ask me some questions, bro. I love you. <laughs> Yeah, I'm glad that we got so in depth about that topic and that you're really able to flesh out your ideas. And I, it, to me, it makes perfect sense. It's the first time I'm even hearing it laid out that uh, clearly from you. So like your, your overall theory. And I'm inclined to agree with you that at the very least, it's more likely than the other explanations. They always, they did this with 9-11 too. They give you like 300 different ways that it happened when in reality it was probably as simple as the buildings were rigged with explosives and they used CGI to put planes in the, the news footage. So it looks, I mean, it's that easy. <laughs> it's really, really simple. And you can, I mean, you can prove all day the CGI of the plane going into the building. It's hilarious how bad it is. It's like watching uh, a Hollywood movie from 20 years ago that had bad computer graphics. I mean, it's literally... I heard, I heard there was a hurricane off the coast and the scalar energy took the hurricane's energy and the hurricane all of a sudden was quelled and then the scalar wave laser that was in World Trade Center in Building 7, they tested the weapon and... <laughs> and they got the technology from aliens. <laughs> yeah, but then they destroyed it all in Building 7 because, you know... Okay, so anyway, that's all a tactic to get us arguing <laughs> over stuff that doesn't matter. Just like the puppet show of the presidential le election is a tactic to get you arguing over stuff that doesn't matter. I mean, I was outside in uh, the front of my house last night and I could hear somebody, I could hear multiple houses listening to the debate, like turned up really loud. And I was like, how grown adults can be entertained by puppet shows? I have no idea, but because <laughs> I mean, they're feeding these guys answers of what to say. You know, they've got earpieces. They probably got teleprompters or, you know, they got coached about what they can and can't say before they go in. How's that any different than a human puppet show? It's the same thing. But what I want to we're going to talk about in the second hour is examples that support your theory that this is uh, specifically even <laughs> in, in nice terms, cleaning up the area in what they believe they're doing, but like targeting lower income, poverty level people and with this type of experimentation, you could call it. And I've got several examples on the biological weapons research side of things that are like, you can go look them up. They're verified experiments that happen. Statute of limitations is passed. Nobody can be prosecuted for this information coming out, even though obviously the, the government and military are complicit in these type of really dangerous experiments on people. This type of weather stuff and this type of fire stuff, it's the same thing. The, the smart meters are talking about it's experimentation on the unknowing population. And what's really important to, for all of us to learn like right now is the difference between science and artificiality or artifice and Clint Richardson, the great Clint Richardson. Uh, I've been really digging into his work since we spoke and Man, he's got this nine and a half hour documentary of the story behind the story of COVID. And it is a humdinger. Most of the documentary is just him showing the public forums where these guys like Fauci and other people in similar positions of unelected authority are talking to each other about what the morality is of doing research to turn natural 
uh, viruses and illnesses into basically what they call gain of function properties where they will like Frankenstein the virus so that it has capabilities that it didn't have in nature. And so this is a really important distinction. What science is, the natural sciences, as they used to be called, you have a hypothesis about what something is in nature, how it works. You do an experiment to test your hypothesis and whether or not your hypothesis is true depends on whether or not nature self-evidently expresses something that concurs with the hypothesis. So what you're doing in natural sciences is you're learning the truth because nature is the truth. What nature does is the only truth that exists because it was already doing what it does before we arrived and it will continue doing what it does with or without us. So Real science is learning about nature. That's actually coming to the truth. That's knowing something, actual knowledge. But what's going on with these type of sciences that, or these so-called sciences, they're really just like mad, mad scientists, you could say, is they're, they're doing things that would never happen in nature at all. And then, you know, getting information from the results so that they can do other things that would never happen in nature at all. So at that point, this is no longer science. You're not testing a hypothesis to learn the truth of nature, of reality. You are doing something unnatural so that you can benefit from it in some way. And that's the definition of artifice. Or, I mean, you could call it, it's an art. And not all art is good. And I'm learning that the hard way that, <laughs> in fact, a lot of what passes for art is very unnatural and bad for us. And the real key to getting things in the right order, putting our world in order, is to put nature before art. So that art only reflects and follows the natural law, expresses and exalts it, and harmonizes with it. And thus we will get some sort of result that's beneficial to us and in alignment with nature, which is our nature. It's who we are. It's what we are. But when we're trying to alter our nature by injecting chemicals and you know, DNA particles and things like that. And saying that that's healthy to a, to like a baby that is as far from nature as you can get. And so I'm going to be bringing out examples uh, in the second hour of some types of experiments. It's very Halloween appropriate. It's the real life, true story of very spooky stuff that actually goes on. And it's just the stuff we're allowed to know about. So I would recommend you or anybody else check out that documentary Clint put out, the story behind the story of COVID-19. Red, Red Pill Sunday School is his YouTube channel, which is the greatest <laughs> YouTube channel name ever. Uh, he's, like, he's like the preacher we never got of actual truth. But yeah, we're going to talk about all those things in the second hour. And one thing that slipped the conversation earlier, we did talk about masks a little bit. I wanted to know if you were ever able to verify whether or not the the standard, you know, blue medical mask that comes from China, that if you walk into a place without one, they'll try to offer you one for like a dollar. Did you ever verify whether or not those are actually like being sprayed with fluoride on the inside? Because you did talk about the antibiotic properties of these things. I've also heard that like the cotton fibers from repeated use can kind of come off and string it out and like you're inhaling cotton fibers, which can be tangled up in your lungs in a way that doesn't come out easily. There's, there's a lot of very interesting things there, but I'm mostly interested in the fluoride aspect because you were talking about fluoride earlier and man, I just caught somebody that I know personally trying to get a drink of water out of the tap at my house. And I was like, stop, no, don't do it. And he's like, no, it's fine. It doesn't bother me. And I was like, just, please take this water. And it was crazy. Homeboy didn't even want the good water. He's like, nah, this is fine. And I was like, all right, you do you, but I want to give you some information because clearly you don't have all the story. If you are thinking that that's okay to uh, put in your body or on your body. I mean, people look up fluoride. If this, this should be old news to you, but you know, get shower head filters, get filters for the water that's coming out of your bathtub, filter everything you can. If you're in a city, I mean, you can't, Beat it all, and it's best not to go crazy about it, but definitely don't wear those masks from China. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> yes. So the I'm I'm glad that you brought that up because this is very I mean, I'm not excited, but I mean they, the masks definitely rub me the wrong way from the get go, right? All so right. Also, really man, I gotta tell you, we got like a five minutes to wrap okay. on the first hour. So then after give your give your stuff after that too. Okay, ready? For anybody interested, just Google this. P-T-F-E, and then mask, 
and then uh, look up images and then you can see like all the masks. It's like all, it's all those ones. And yes, the blue ones and the PTFE stands for poly tetra fluoroethylene and poly tetra fluoroethylene is um, synthetic fluoride, which is Teflon. And um, so there's different schools of thought. I, I remember recently uh, I found this old book at the library. I love oh, when the libraries were real. Are they, are they even real anymore? Are we over? Are we, they, don't, we don't, they don't exist now. So, okay, either way, I found this book at the library and it's this, it, it's this old health book and it says to get your daily doses of fluoride, cook with Teflon pans because the Teflon pans will like off gas and leach that synthetic fluoride and that's supposedly good for you, which is not, it's actually poisonous. So if you learn the truth that Teflon pans are bad and that you can't scratch those, you don't want that crap in your body. Um, and you learn that fluoride is bad. And then you learn that this, these masks have the, the Teflon in them. Yeah. You're huffing freaking fluoride while you from China <laughs> when you when you use these masks not cool um i would imagine um you know the the powers that be are probably you know um excited to get everybody fluoridated this way as well and if you if you do your own research um the even the surgical surgeon community doesn't think that these masks should be worn very long and it's for antibiotics. If they wanted to create some sort of filter that would literally kill bacteria in, in the, if it was in the air, if you're like breathing over someone while you've got them sliced open, but only for a very, very short amount of time, you know? Um, so yeah, check that out. That's real and that's unreal. And I, I, I would stay away from wearing all those if anything, I would uh, do my best to get a cotton mask or something like that, but avoid those for sure. And then as far as my websites go, Chance, I got to go. I'm, let me let me grab you in a second. There's a bunny out and I'm fucking totally annoyed. I don't know how the bunny got out, but I, let me come back and give you my shit. It'll be like two seconds. Okay. I got to get this bunny. It's <laughs> okay, okay, man. It's like that's not a... supposed to be uh, like escaped. I'll yeah, be do right. your thing, I'm, man. I'm sorry. One second. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I'm sorry, bro. Like Dude, it's all good. You got nothing to be saying about like, either way, I got these we got these bunnies and like um they're they're a blessing, they're amazing, but they're supposed to be in the fence and not outside getting almost hit by a car. Okay, so let me <laughs> let me do the um I'll tell you. Are you ready? Yeah, um totally. I will I wanna say before you give your plugs, one last thing on the mask thing. When I was at the grocery store last night. There were two other people checking out right next to me, not wearing them. And I saw another one today at a store not wearing them. So like just in the last couple of days, all, all around, I've seen more people resisting it than at any point up to now, which is kind of cool because they just like extended all these mandates. And then nearby small towns in my area that didn't have the mandate, just put them in in October. And uh, it's. It's like they, it's basically like they know that if something doesn't go their way right away, they just keep waiting and they push it again later and then it'll eventually they'll get it through. They, they just keep plugging at these uh, at the stripping away our natural right to have things like uncorrupted oxygen, which is the breath of life and source or uncorrupted and pure blood, which would be blood that's not been tainted by injections. So it's very important that we. Like uh, the Teflon thing, I also have to say this. I, I think I have Teflon cookware. Like after this conversation, I'm running out of my house and I'm going to go buy like some copper and iron skillets and shit. I'm, I mean, it seems so simple. Stainless steel. Stainless steel is good too. Okay. I like stainless steel. It's recycled material too. So there we go. But yeah, Matt, give your plugs and we'll hop over to the second hour. Amazing. And, and thank you. This has been fun. Hey, I'm, it's always a pleasure. Um, so to those people out there, um, being brave enough to not give a crap with the idiots, zombies of society think of you. It's really just like this, like, are you going to cater to everyone's fears? Or are you going to actually not asphyxiate yourself? <laughs> like, oh, wonder what you want and represent the truth while you're at it. So thank you for representing the truth with integrity, people. Like whenever I see someone with their face out nowadays, I'm like, bless you. Whenever I see someone driving down the street with their windows up, with their mask on and their face shield, I'm like, dude, are you human? Are you stupid? Like, what is wrong with you guys? Like, I'm really getting into it recently um, because, you know, it's, it's, it's full on. It's full on. And 
just like GMO food, organic, okay? In my lifetime, organic food came out. And guess what? People cast their vote with their dollar bills, with their paycheck, and they bought organic food, and they supported organic food, and now organic food is in the grocery stores. Activists got loud, they brought GMO to the forefront, and people did their part. And everyone can play their part just by showing their beautiful face, you know? And you're all beautiful. Don't let those... (laughs) <laughs> magazines tell you otherwise. I thought that like even the programming of the children and having the magazines and everyone's like ashamed of their faces and now they like, oh cover your face, you're so ugly. No, you're all beautiful, you guys. Uh, they want you to think that you have something to hide from. It's like ridiculous. Matt, so, yeah. I saw at a store the other day, I saw a woman with her son and an older woman walks up to them and the kid, he looked like he was maybe four or three, he got this scared look on his face and shrunk behind his mother. And his mom said, oh, you just don't recognize your grandma with her mask on. That's your grandma. And I was like, this is happening to children. This is not cool. Taught to be afraid of strangers. Doesn't even recognize their own grandma. So it's sad. I know like both of us are able to detach a little bit emotionally from all this. But even, you know, is that person an idiot wearing a mask and a face shield in their car? Yes, but like an idiot is someone that doesn't know themselves and doesn't know that they actually have all power, all creative power. Um, you know, you have everything you need and the fear is just the real disease, man. And we can say it a million ways, but those people, I, I have sympathy for them. I'm not mad at them, not mad at you if you've been wearing one because you think it's the right thing to do. I just want you to know you don't have to. And it's, a, it's actually a bigger deal than it seems like. They want it to seem like, oh, it's just no big deal. Just put your face diaper on. But it's, it's a... Uh, <laughs> Gosh, you know what it is. It's just bad news, man. Let's so <laughs> okay. Let's I know. Talk. I mean, we could we could go on forever. And it's and 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 for those people that know the truth and are just like, no, I just don't want to offend anybody. And then they cover their faces. Um, to those people who are covering their faces but know the truth and they're just trying to hide behind things and they're doing it outside in public and they where they don't even have to and they're just doing it because they don't want to offend anybody. Those go people, along I'm, and get I'm, along. I'm mad at you, those people officially i just want to say that you might not be mad on that so either way i love you i love everyone too so <laughs> but no really we got to stand up for our freedoms and like just the showing your face is just really real you know like um i'm going to start telling people that i've trained in deep sea diving and that um when they tell me to wear my mask i'm just gonna say no actually i don't i'm not breathing right now so you don't have anything to worry about okay I, 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 take really I can hold my breath the whole time I'm in here. Yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. I'm, I'm totally trained to do this. Don't you worry one bit. I took a deep breath out in the parking lot. I'm not going to be breathing inside your establishment. So either way, please check me out on Facebook, Matt Landman. Um, YouTube, Matt Landman. Actualactivists.com. It's a nice one-stop resource for 5G truth, all sorts of truth. You, you name it. I guarantee you'll, you'll learn something no matter who you are. Even myself, I surprise myself. Um, Frankenskiesthemovie.com. Please check it out. Frankenskies2.com coming slow but slowly but surely. I want to include all this fire stuff and climate chains like shackles because the Segalian dialectic, we're going to be convinced that we need to spray our skies when that's really the problem, not the solution. Also, please check out Sparrow Gear, S. P-E-R-O, it's a Latin word for hope, Sparrow Gear on Instagram, sparrowgear.com. Um, it gets you to Sparrow Protection Clothing. That's my website. But um, that's my EMF protective clothing line. And I'm making these Faraday pouches. I'm now double lining the pouches with silver because they're really cranking up the frequencies on us. And you don't want to be tracked and traced and have your phone emitting all this nonsense. It's, it's, an, it's an EMF-ridden 5G apocalyptic dystopia and it's up to us to mitigate and our emf exposure and to learn about it so that we can a procreate b teach the children you know c lead the way but really we need to educate ourselves and please check out the website and thank you so much for everyone for listening yeah and it it relates to the energy vampirism episode last week actually if you can strengthen your own aura and your connection to source and cosmic energy with a and integrate it with your healthy bodily energy field it's a that's actually a type of emf protection too i mean i haven't seen the research on that but i really think that a powerful aura just repels stuff that's dissonant in every sense on a from a higher dimension in a way and so just keep yourself strong out there and come join us in the second hour where we're going to talk about even weirder stuff than the first hour it's going to be a blast and thank you matt this has been as always really good to have you and we'll keep doing them
All right, everybody, we made it to the end of another show. And uh, kind of heavy duty stuff here, serious topic and all that. And of course, I would rather just be talking about fun stuff and love and light, but there is a type of false light that's really tricking people constantly coming through all these screens. And it is in the form of the narrative that is pushing people further and further into division, further and further into sickness and unhealth. And we got to do something about it. I really like Rudolf Steiner. And while I'm not like 100% versed with all of the works he's got going on from back then, he talks about vaccines specifically. He talks about the entire idea of infectious viruses and diseases being something that metaphysically opens you up to getting sick just by believing in the concept. So <laughs> like I, I said this in the uh, plus extension, but I learned from Clint and then by looking into it on my own in dictionaries and whatnot, that even the word belief means to love something archaically because leaf means love in an archaic form of English. So be careful what you put your belief in because that means you love it and just question things until you have concrete self-evident reality in front of you telling you something is the way it is, right? And yeah, that rules out a lot of ideas that we've been told to take for granted, but that's okay. That's a good thing. But I'd love you guys to get on Matt's websites, check out actualactivist.com, all the Facebook groups that he mentioned that he's got going. He's also got Frankenskies the movie. If you haven't seen that yet, go watch it. And I'd like to encourage you to donate money to Matt because uh, he didn't bring this up on the show and I won't go into detail, but like the man hasn't made it easy on him in the last couple of years. And what he's doing takes up like a lot of time. So although Spiro is doing well and I consider buying something from Spiro to be kind of a donation because you're helping him out, maybe that's what you should do. I think that the man could use our support. I mean, I could use your support. He could use your support. We need to be supporting each other and not these giant corporations that want to experiment on us and extract our wealth and life force energy for their own uh, empowerment over us, right? So in the plus extension this time, speaking of supporting me, we talked about some really interesting things. I did promise in the free hour that I was going to get into talking about like more government experiments that prove that it's the rule, not the exception, that these type of bioweapons and weather modifications are all happening decade after decade on the unwitting population and that we need to actually be aware of it and not believe in it, but know that it's going on, just plain knowledge, and then put our intention and our voice towards the ending of this particular paradigm. But I didn't get into talking about those specific cases. I will just do that in the outro in a minute, but first I'll tell you what actually happened in PLUS or, you know, a little bit of it. And if you want to get the second hour, the plus extension is only five bucks a month. Crazy good deal. Trust me. <laughs> I've seen a lot of much more lucrative business models out there. And I'm not trying to just rob you of your cash. I just need some kind of energy reciprocation if we're going to establish the type of relationship where you are an adult, I'm an adult, and we have the adult conversation in the second half. I mean, I'm not saying you're not an adult if you're only a free listener, but if you want the the deeper, wider view on any of the topics that are covered here, that's the way to go. Five dollars a month. It's like you would tip that much at an inexpensive restaurant for one meal. And I'm talking a whole archive of shows and one a week, a whole extra hour. Let's do it. All right. Patreon.com slash interverse. That's how you get there. We talked a lot about Mars. What's going on with Mars this year? We talked about whether or not someone should change their name and what the legal ramifications of our name and birth date is. That was really interesting. I got into some of Kurt Kallenbach's ideas about the zygote and our point of origin and why the birth date is a sham. The birthday is <laughs> it's a trick. Don't celebrate a birthday. Apparently, they're taking everything good away from us. <laughs> Christmas is evil, too. Santa, say, no, my God. But yeah, we discussed a lot more of the... Um, vaccines i'm whatever i'm saying the words f off algorithm of censorship i'm saying what i want but we talked about how those things those injectable chemicals are a form of cannibalism and other elements about why we might, might not want to be corrupting our blood the spiritual representative of the life force energy in our body we also discussed the air term ch change and terminology for currency and other aspects of daily life and the control systems and how we're migrating from a water age to an air age and why that terminology matters. And then 
finally, we got really deep into talking about transhumanism and how it really represents destroying our own nature, which is a bad idea. So there was more than that, like a ton more. We actually went extra 15 minutes. I told a crazy story of something that happened to me last week. And I hope you guys tune into it because like I said, I don't want the second hour to just fall on deaf ears. I want many ears, third ears to be open to receive that info. But it's not the only way you can support the show. I'll tell you more ways you can support the show later. But first, let's talk about some of these experiments I mentioned. Uh, I knew a lot about this stuff already, but I found a very good documentary by Clint Richardson, who I bring up all the time because he's like my current personal mentor. I mean, long range, he's not directly mentoring me, but his work is uh, really raising me up. I'll just say that. And in his recent super documentary, the story behind the story of COVID-19, uh, it's called Wagging the Dog. It's like over nine hours. He gets into detail about these type of bioweapons research programs and how they're happening, how frequent and common they are, and what a joke it really is in the name of science, true science, natural science is to be artificially creating things that would never exist in nature because somehow that's going to protect us against these deadly things that wouldn't have ever existed in nature. It's beyond the pale, man, but this information's out there. You can Google any of these experiments I'm going to talk about and you'll find something. So there, maybe there's conflicting info out there, but it seems that at least some of these are real, if not all of them that I'm going to list. And it's just the tip of the iceberg. All right. So the first one that's abhorrent that occurs is the Willowbrook experiments in 19... 19- 56 to 1970 it was aimed supposedly at discovering a cure for hepatitis and they basically injected a bunch of mentally disabled children with experimental drugs meant to cure hepatitis and uh, the kids obviously couldn't consent to that and often they died from the treatments and this went on for years and years and years who cares if the experiment results were in some way helpful or successful i really don't it's not acceptable Uh, So Willowbrook experiment, you can look that up. There's another crazy one here called Operation Big Buzz. Big Buzz was where they basically weaponized mosquitoes or tested the weaponization of mosquitoes. They claimed that they didn't have these mosquitoes infected with anything. But basically, it's a 1955 experiment where the government was breeding millions of mosquitoes. The, The particular genus of mosquito that's known to carry yellow fever But they claim it didn't have any. And they released that into Georgia parks in 1955 to see how the bugs were dispersed into the suburbs and determine how effective the insects could be in biological warfare by tracking biting habits on citizens. Operation Big Buzz. Need I say more? Pure pure madness, really. Uh, September 1950, there was experimentation in San Francisco about dispersing biological weapons from the air. I believe it was called Operation Sea Spray. And uh, they hurt and killed many people by testing out, I don't know if it was bacteria. It was biological weapons, though. They were just releasing them into the streets of San Francisco. It's crazy. (laughs) Yeah, and some people died. Some people were just in the hospital for a long time. But like one person getting hurt by government Un- unconsenting research as an experimental test subject. If you think that is not going on now, it's it's silly. The reason why we have this stuff declassified is because statutes of limitations passes, and now you can't even prosecute most of these people because they're mostly dead, as if the courts and all that were actually here to protect us. But anyway, at this point, I might just be... You know, it might just be overkill to talk about these depressing things. I really just want you to know it's actually a thing, not to scare you, but to like get us to speak up about it. Let's just start speaking up about it. I've got five or six more on this list. I'm just going to stop there (laughs) because, yeah, it's not I'm not here to be like doom porn, fear porn, freak you out. And ultimately, you got to look into these things for yourself to be convinced one way or the other. Just want you to know what's going on. And uh, all the more reason why we need to shore up our health against all the different forms of toxicity that are constantly invading throughout the lands that have been artificially created. And it really relates to the stuff with the fires in, in the West Coast, because to me, weather modification experimentation 
that's just as against nature and potentially just as catastrophically harmful as, you know, biological weapons research. Maybe not. I mean, I personally don't think they're ever going to make like some bioweapon that wipes out the whole planet. It's just not going to roll that way. Nature has too many fail safes in, in place, I'm sure. But the fact is people do get sick and there's a lot of ways and reasons it could be happening. And if they were, if the uh, powers that be were actually straight with us, they would actually just cloud seed, like Matt said, and put out the fires if those were real fires. So we've been able to make it rain for a long, long time. Frank and Skies proves that. So yeah, go support Matt. Go check out Frank and Skies. Support Interverse by leaving a review on iTunes or, you know, just following on YouTube, SoundCloud, Spotify, whatever it is you like to listen through. That'd be great. You can uh, check out some links to affiliate stores that are in the show notes as well. That's a way that you can help out the podcast. And uh, man, what am I going to play us out with musically? I really don't know. So you're just going to have to check the show notes to see what I play in the outro. I'll find something good. Give me a minute. And that's it for today. Got a lot of stuff coming, of course. Many good things on the schedule. Getting my scheduling game on track ahead, ahead of the curve and all that. So thanks for tuning in. Hope you liked talking with Matt and me. I always like having him on and I'm sure he'll be one of the most recurring guests going forward because can't help it. We're good buddies. All right. You guys are all my good buddies too. Much love. Have fun out there. Stay frosty. Talk to you soon. Yeah.